Hello! Welcome to the 10th episode of Virtual Youth Group with Illuminate Youth Ministry of First United Methodist Church. Yes, we are in double digit episodes now. Unbelievably. So, um, I wanted to do something special for tonight's episode. Well, it's special to me. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. Through all the weirdness and stupidity and flat out goofiness, um, I have not been able to do everything in one take. I've messed up a couple times, believe it or not. So here for the next several minutes, you'll get to see some of the times I messed up, some of the times we just couldn't contain our laughter, some of the times we've had camera issues, some of the times uh, we just really enjoyed what we were doing. Also be showing some of my favorite like pieces from those silly segments. Uh, uncut and unedited so that you'll get to see just <laughs> what happens between the little cuts that you see all the time. So enjoy all of our goofs from episodes 1 through 9 and we'll see you on the other side of this for our continuing discussion on mental health awareness. So enjoy! Are you recording? Right now? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're this is all one shoot. And even if you don't know it off the top of your head, uh, it'll be in your discussion notes following this little message, which at this point I'm not quite sure. I think it'll be in, like, there. we're gonna give you a link somewhere. Check it out. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I should probably cut this part out. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, your head's cut off. It is? Yeah, because you're taller than me. Thanks. Now leave. Hey guys! Um, nope. I should figure out what I'm gonna say. So it's helpful for you to sing a song while you wash your hands, so you kinda like... So you know how long to do it. Um, so a good song to do is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. <laughs> is Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, okay? So I'm gonna... <laughs> Okay, I don't know how the end of the song goes. Health tip number three. Make sure... <laughs> Make sure you're drinking water. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have it on to zoom. Why is it zooming? Okay. Here, what? Well, turn away and then we'll turn the camera to see. <laughs> Good laugh. I can't wait, okay. Good. No, my face looks like so weird. What am I supposed to do? Can I smile? <laughs> okay. Are, we serious? Are, you, are you doing two finger guns or one? 
Okay. 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 Wait. And other things we will make up as we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Our first competition. You've heard of bottle flipping. That's okay. You've heard of bottle flipping. You've heard of bottle flipping. That's old news. We're doing banana flipping. <laughs> oh yeah. Can I say can I say look at that flush with the toilet seat? <laughs> Flush with the lid. I'll still do another banana. Oh my gosh. Look, <laughs> I actually did it. <laughs> Don't worry. These bananas are being put to good use. Banana tacos at muffins. Coming soon. We should probably start over. Huh? We should probably start over. What do you mean? Like, I'm not gonna show this whole thing. Okay. Alright, this next game is called T-Cap. <laughs> I get it. Waiting, waiting, waiting for the eggs to finish. Actually, wait for the toast to finish. Oh my gosh. Okay, come on, hurry up. This is not recording. At all? Yep, so it's for just, yeah, so just, yeah, so those are just the ways that you can eat a potato. Double the potato. looking for a different sort of friendship during this quarantine, for the price of four, you can add potato. Nah, we'll, we'll pass. Okay, Easter cocktail peanuts. Now, I like regular peanuts, so we'll see if these are any good, too. Mmm. 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 Oh. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Beef jerky. I've never had Easter flavored jerky. Ooh, it smells good. Beef jerky's great. Oh man, this should be in every Easter basket. Mm. Alright, we're gonna put the beef jerky at the top of the list. Now, Emily will put some weird stuff in the Easter basket this year. I guess in Italy they celebrate Easter with Italian seasoning. So, you know. 
That's gonna go above a little crispy bunny. Just under nerd's root. Blech. Oh, just look at it. The sugar is like glitter. I hate glitter. There's a hair on it. Oh, Cleo. It's staring at me menacingly. Look at it. When he was a young warthog. When I was a young warthog. Very nice. Thanks. I'm gonna change my name. Then I got downhearted. Every time that I farted. Not in front of the kids. Oh, sorry. Hakuna Matata. What if I jumped off the roof? I'm gonna give that a big old negative because I don't wanna to have to go to the ER during COVID. Uh, and yo. Okay. One. Now. <laughs> you might have to get out a couple laughs. Hey everybody! <laughs> hey everybody! <laughs> okay. Welcome to another episode of Colin's Kitchen! <laughs> Today on Colin's Kitchen, we will be making another well-known favorite. <laughs> There we go. I'm gonna smell them, okay. gonna fall off the knife but right onto the bread so we are in business here as they say um. <laughs> now you can eat the banana however you Uh. 
Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Josh, for being here. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little scared. I didn't even cut anything yet. Aren't you gonna do a mohawk? Yes. You're cutting in the middle first. A reverse mohawk. What? I was gonna do a reverse mohawk. No! <laughs> no! Do a okay. regular mohawk. Okay. So cut the outsides, right? Yeah. I'm gonna reveal just how much I am balding. Blessings to you all. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Hi, people. So I trust that you have enjoyed all the mistakes I've made. All the extra goofs you didn't get to see before. And... Um, just, I don't know. I have a lot of fun doing these. It's a lot of work. It's tiring. Um, I am editing videos more than I ever thought I would, but I really love being able to do this for you and being able to connect with you in this way. It's not the preferred way to be connected with you guys right now, but it's better than nothing. Thanks for tuning in to 10 episodes and for tuning in uh, each week and uh, for all the other ways that you're staying connected with us, and I hope you'll continue to look out for ways to remain connected with us, because human connection is so important, and being connected with other people is so important, and that's what we're going to talk about for a little bit uh, tonight in today's uh, lesson, so I'm going to get right into it. So whether you've been here from the start on March 18th, or uh, if this is your first time tuning in, uh, we're really glad that you are watching and that you decided to join in with us online this week. Like I said, for the last few weeks we've been talking about mental health because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, so we have been exploring a few ways that we can both respond to and acknowledge mental health issues. Uh, and I want to continue that conversation today by discussing the relationship between human connection and mental health. And then we're going to talk about a few things that you can do to continue to connect with people during this weird time. So my goal for this week and for this lesson is um, to be brief but very practical in helping us understand why positive relationships are so important in our lives. So I want to give you a couple of facts and statistics about what it does for people, what human connection does for people. Uh, I want to talk about ways that we can build up human connection, simple ways but meaningful and uh, helpful ways too. Uh, and I want to talk about how we can be connecting even during a quarantine. So some of the stuff is things that we have touched on before, but I want to take it a little bit further. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So every February, uh, we have a high school retreat, an 8th through 12th grade retreat. Um, so a couple years ago, our theme for this retreat was called Mosaic. And I'm not talking about the like Old Testament Mosaic Law. Uh, we're talking about mosaic, like the uh, the the tiles that fit together. I'll show a picture. Look, here's a picture of a mosaic. Yes. So we spent this entire retreat weekend discussing the importance of community and how we were designed by God to be different pieces that fit together uh, to create one whole beautiful image. Those images that we created together, those mosaics that we talked about, and yeah, we actually made some mosaics together. Um, those images have stuck with me uh, for these past couple years since we've talked about that. Um, along with, you know, what we talked about regarding the importance of something called social capital. So for those of you who don't know uh, what social capital means, it's essentially just a fancy term used to describe uh, tangible relationships and the amount of connections that you have as a human being. Uh, the more social capital you have, 
the more invested in a community you are, okay? Uh, so we looked at some statements from research performed by a man named Robert Putnam, who is an author, a professor, and a political scientist, okay? So he, he made several statements regarding his research on social capital that were, to me, they were pretty interesting, uh, including this one, this statement that says, the more social capital you have, the happier and the healthier you will be. That's a pretty uh, straightforward statement. The more relationships you have, the happier and healthier you will be. So Putnam's research showed that those with more social capital had less sad days, uh, less depressive episodes. Uh, they were more likely to just generally be happier. The research also showed that those with less social capital uh, had to take more sick days. Putnam also stated that greater social capital means a greater survival from heart attacks, uh, less risk for cancer recurrence, less depression and anxiety, less cognitive decline with aging, less likely to die from heart disease, and more resistance to illness in general. Putnam even found that lack of social capital is responsible for as many deaths per year as smoking is. That all sounds pretty fancy, but I think what his research is generally stating is something we've probably heard before, is that people with close relationships in their lives tend to live longer, happier lives. They tend to be healthier and happier people. And to me, that's fascinating. That's crazy that relationships can do that for your mental, physical, emotional, spiritual health. Putnam's research also showed that more social capital means less negative stress, less aggression and anger, better problem-solving skills, more tolerance, better psychological and biological growth, more confidence, better sense of belonging, more safety and security, more opportunities to finding a good housing situation, uh, opportunities to find transportation, opportunities to find a job. So all of that to say this, more human connection leads to a more fulfilling life. You cannot tell me that God did not intentionally design people to function like that. When we are connected with other people, when we are caring for others, when we are getting to know somebody else and building up trust with others through forgiveness and emotional connection, when we're doing all that, we are at our best as people, as children of God. Another Harvard professor, another Robert actually, named Robert Waldinger, uh, he took this a step further in his research, uh, claiming that it isn't just the quantity of good friends you have, it's the depth and the quality of those relationships that you have that influence health and happiness. So some people are damaged by not being able to build those deep connections very easily, or they lose trust when they experience a toxic relationship. And those are things that are truly hard to recover from, and if we are not reaching out to those people with love and care and support, that's where mental health issues can increase in that population of people. So we, as people, are also damaged by things like technology and social media. So now, don't get me wrong here, without technology in this current situation that we all find ourselves in, uh, none of us would be able to have any sort of human connection. MHANational.org states that the average American spends two and a half hours per day watching TV, but only 30 minutes per day socializing. So when we consider all those things that we discussed about Robert Putnam and Robert Waldinger's research that we just discussed earlier, uh, that is a lot of missed opportunities to be happier and healthier people. So how do we make connections? How do we make these deep emotional connections? Uh, many of us are surrounded by people all the time, especially when life is normal, but we don't always know what we need to do to build up these relationships. So again, MHA National lists several tips for connecting that all of us could do. Uh, and these five tips uh, may seem very simple to some of you, may seem very simple in nature, but I think we often tend to overlook the simplicity of connection, especially when we're trying to establish new connections. So first thing you can do is reach out to people where you constantly see them. So for many of you students, that means talking to somebody on your soccer team, uh, talking to somebody in the choir who sings next to you, somebody who you sit next to in math class, or the hundreds of people you have lunch with every day. So that doesn't seem like too crazy of an idea, right? 
But that's probably because you already are doing that on some sort of level. That's probably already happening on some sort of level. You become friends with people you interact with most often, who you see most often. So here's the tip that we're saying is just make that happen more. Number two, talk about shared experiences. That's otherwise known as small talk. Some people don't like small talk. The reality is, though, that it opens up the door for deeper conversation down the road. So where some people don't find the value in small talk, other people can really see the value in what opening the door to conversation looks like through small talk. Number three, schedule a time to be social. Some people work better with goals and schedules laid out before them. So by simply scheduling 30 minutes per day, plugging that into your daily routine can motivate you when you otherwise feel, you know, just like flipping on the TV and tuning out and bumming out on the couch or something like that. Number four, don't feel pressure to do everything in person, right? <laughs> Especially right now, what other option do you have? Uh, but COVID-19 is not an excuse to give up on developing relationships. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit more soon, about ways you can connect during isolation. Um, but yeah, text, call, Zoom. These options should not replace face-to-face -face conversation and relationships, but they should be used to build upon them. And there's no reason that these conversations can't be deep and meaningful either, right? And number five is accept invitations and organize your own activities. So even if it's not necessarily something you want to do, uh, use the time that you had to build on those relationships. When somebody asks you to do something, do it. Or if nobody's asking you to do something, then you plan something your own. Now, even in the simplicity of some of these things, uh, the reality is many of them look different right now due to social distancing requirements. So last week we discussed that many mental health issues like anxiety, depression, and loneliness are on the rise because of quarantine and social distancing. Uh, it is super important that we are doing what we can to continue to connect to each other during this time for all those reasons that we mentioned earlier. So here's a few quick, real quick ideas that you could do to stay connected even when you're stuck inside your own home. Uh, one, first thing is volunteer from home. Uh, we've been asking you to do this a lot, but there's no shortage of things you could be doing. Write letters, make phone calls to isolated seniors. Uh, we have a list if you want to know who you can contact. Make homemade masks. You can still serve God and others even from your own home. Second way you can remain connected during this time is to continue to talk to people that you trust. Don't shut people out just because you are shut in. Have Zoom calls or phone calls with friends, family, youth leaders mentors, etc, etc. Stay connected with the people you trust most. Third thing you could do, start a virtual club. Is that silly? Maybe. Does it matter? Huh? -uh. Find a new book or movie, a hobby uh, that other people are interested in. Talk about it together once a week. Pro tip, we've got small groups that meet every single week already in place. Fourth thing that you could do, online video games. Uh, yes, I am supporting video games as a good way to connect with each other during this time. Play together, chat together, laugh together, have fun, right? It's honestly a great way to be connected with some people right now. And again, none of these should replace face-to-face -face interaction, but if you can talk to a friend that you've not talked to for, I don't know, months, weeks, years, and you could do it on a video game, why not? And the fifth thing is don't forget to connect with yourself. Don't forget to take a break from every screen. You're looking at them all day. Take a break from them. We're going to talk more next week about self-care, but that's really what the lead-in to that is, is you need to take a break. <laughs> all right, so at this point you might be saying, Colin, cool, I get it. Relationships are good. I have friends. I have family. I am connected and have been connecting with them well. Good for you. Awesome. Seriously. That's great. But remember that as Christians, we are called to care for the least of these, right? We're called to care for those people who might not have those connections right now. We need to look out for those who might not be able to be connected in the ways that we are connected with others. Yes, that might mean that you should strike up a conversation with the weird kid in school. It might mean that you might need to talk to the kid who sits alone at lunch. 
It might mean that you need to talk to the kid who sits in the corner on their phone. It might mean that you should get connected with the isolated elders in our church right now. Or invite one of those kids in school to play a video game with you. Or even to write an encouraging letter to a younger student. Those are the people that might be struggling more with mental health right now and are not able to connect with people. You may already have the connections in your life that will keep you healthy and happy. But keep this in mind, everyone on this planet needs those connections. I believe that everybody on this planet knows that they need those connections and they desire to have them. They want to be connected in deep and meaningful ways. So as we continue to discuss mental health for the rest of this month, uh, let us remember that God designed people for human connection. He called us to invite others into meaningful relationships. You could be the connection that somebody else needs right now. Let's pray together. God, thank you um, for this way that we can be connecting with each other. Thank you for the ways that you are showing us and revealing to us uh, connection, ways to be connected. Uh, but I, I pray that we would not take our connections for granted and we would be the ones to reach out to those who might have a harder time finding connections right now. Uh, help us to remember your calling on our lives as people who should invite others into relationship. Help us to remember that we desire personal connection in order to grow and in order to learn and change and uh, love and care for others and feel empathy. We need a personal, deep, meaningful connection in order to feel all those things and to, to have others feel those things too. So thank you for our ability to be connected with others. Thank you for the ways you provide us with that connection and help us to have the courage to seek out those connections uh, with other people and also to seek out the people who need those connections more right now. Thank you for all you do for us. Uh, please help us to see each other soon. We miss each other. We want to be together. We desire those personal face-to-face -face connections with each other. And we just long to be together. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thanks again for being with us for episode 10 of our virtual youth group series, whatever you want to call it. Hey, we'll get to episode 20 if we have to, if it means that we we'll, can still be connected with you. But just please, please, please know, I say it just about every week, I would much rather be with you in person. I can't wait till the day that we can do that together again. So... If you want to find out more about who we are, you can find our website in the description below. Uh, you can find more about our church through our church's website, which is also in the description below. Love you guys. I miss you so much. Um, God is good, though. Let us always remember that God is good. He's in control. He knows what's going on. He knows what he's doing. And we can trust that he doesn't change. And he's got a plan. So until we see each other again, blessings to you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.